Friends, our uh, expert physician today is Dr. Sean Stewart. Dr. Sean Stewart uh, is with the Center for Vascular Medicine in uh, Center for Vascular Medicine's Annapolis and Eastern Clinics, and he covers the entire Eastern Shore as well. Uh, Dr. Stewart is uh, both certified in emergency medicine and has a special area of interest in the treatment of venous and lymphatic disorders. He is an associate professor at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Amongst uh, Dr. Stewart's uh, multiple claim to fame stories, his favorite story is that when he was a resident at uh, NIH, Dr. Anthony Fauci actually fell asleep on his shoulder. They were all obviously working really, really hard, even then finding cures. So Dr. Stewart, with his special interest in venous and lymphatic disorders today, is really going to help us understand deep venous thrombosis, blood clots, and also about pain in the legs in the middle of the night, night cramps. Thank you. Thank you. Another very commonly asked question is about blood clots. Why do people get blood clots? Why do they need to worry about it? Can they die from them? Sure. So um, the, the word blood clot is, is always causes of alarm. Um, the causes of blood clots, I, I really think of three different things. The first thing I think of is immobility. Uh, we do not have a heart in the foot pumping blood out of the legs. So we rely on muscle contraction to push that blood out of the legs. If you're not contracting your muscles, then what happens is blood tends to fill in the veins in the legs. And when blood becomes static or fills in these veins, they have a higher tendency to, to form clots. So any state of inactivity, uh, whether it's a patient is bedridden because of a surgery or a patient has a cast on their leg and can't contract those muscles because of a surgery. Um, we see patients that have uh, uh, been sedentary or sitting for long periods of time because of travel car travel, plane travel, this is a risk for blood clots. So uh, patients that have had strokes that uh, can't move one side of the body are at a higher risk for blood clots. So immobility is, is one big factor that we see. Another factor that we see with blood clots is patients that have some blood factor or disorder that causes their blood to want to clot um, more aggressively or, or more easily. Um, patients could have an inherited blood disorder that causes their blood to clot more easily, or there's certain things that uh, um, we, we have going on in the body like cancers, um, medications, uh, birth control, uh, cancer treatments, all can cause uh, blood clots as, as well. And then lastly, um, things like, again, varicose veins, uh, we know that if you have a uh, varicose veins in the legs, this can increase your risk for blood clots as well, because again, these varicose veins fill, the blood rests in that uh, area and then becomes uh, clotted. Uh, so that's a... And how do these clots present? What are the common symptoms that you see your patients presenting with when they have a blood clot in the leg? Yeah, so blood clots can be tricky. Um, because sometimes there's not many symptoms at all, but most significant blood clots will cause some degree of pain and swelling. You see, we really worry about blood clots that form in the thigh because these blood clots that are in the thigh cause or, or can create three problems. The first problem is that it can cause swelling and pain in the legs. And this is a big concern for patients and this can affect the health and the integrity of the skin when our leg swells. The second thing we worry about is a blood clot that breaks off in the leg and ends up going to the lung. This is called a pulmonary embolism, and this can be uh, deadly in rare cases. And then the last thing we worry about blood clots is a thing called post-thrombotic syndrome or post-clot syndrome, where a subset of individuals that have large thigh vein clots can cause irreversible damage to that vein and result in chronic swelling and pain in that leg. And how do you diagnose these clots, Dr. Stewart? 
So blood clots are diagnosed by a non-invasive painless ultrasound that's uh, done in the office setting or hospital setting. And uh, from a treatment perspective, uh, how do you treat them when, if a patient comes to you with where he's had a he or she has had a blood clot right away versus if somebody had a blood clot like you said in a post thrombotic situation uh, has had a blood clot in the remote past yeah sure you, you know not all blood clots uh, are are um, equal uh, in terms of uh, clinical severity or clinical significance um, a blood clot that forms uh, recently typically needs medical to thin the blood. We call this anticoagulation, where what uh, um, patients are prescribed oral medication these days, and that thins the blood. So it prevents this blood clot from propagating and growing more and allows the body time to reabsorb and break down that blood clot. Now, patients that have a history of blood clots six months or a year from now, um, that initial event has passed and they may not benefit from blood thinning medication because they may no longer be at risk for that blood clot growing uh, or that blood clot breaking off and going to the lung. Patients when they have pain in their legs while asleep in the middle of the night and especially if it's a crampy kind of a pain, what could that be from and can you do anything about it? Sure. One thing that I tell a lot of my patients is that cramping, especially at night, can be a medical mystery. We do know certain things that can cause cramping, um, including dehydration, side effect medication, low electrolytes like low potassium and magnesium in the body. That's why doctors tell you to drink lots of water, stay hydrated. A lot of the doctors also tell you to uh, eat bananas and, and uh, take vitamin supplementation because it's important because cramping can be due to uh, this these type of uh, causes. We also know that um, buildup of lactic acid um, from vigorous exercise or again side effects of medication can be a cause and we also know that varicose veins can also cause uh, cramping especially nocturnal cramping. In fact in my experience if we have varicose veins and cramping and uh, we treat those varicose veins, uh, the majority of patients uh, see uh, a, an improvement in their cramping and about half actually that cramping uh, completely goes away. 